स्थापकाय च धर्म सेधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम ओ राम कृष्ण द एस्टाब्लिश द इटर्नल रिलीजन द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स द बेस्ट ऑफ ऑल इनकारनेशन वी सेल यू दी इन द लास्ट रीडिंग क्लास we stopped at page number 593 of this book ram krishna the great master volume 1 we shall continue from there today we were discussing in the last class about the various moods of sri ram krishna as a spiritual teacher and he was how being calumnized by ordinary people as eccentric whereas the the owners of the temple of kali mathuranath and rani rasmani they were holding him in high respect so the same story will continue today we shall start reading all the officers in the temple and the women attendants of the rani raised their hue and cry In the last class, we had, we had read that Rani Rasmani has come to the Kali Temple to listen to the songs of Sri Ram Krishna. So Sri Ram Krishna was singing, and she was also sitting nearby and doing some japa all by herself, not attending attentive to Sri Ram Krishna's song, but thinking something about a court and the court affair. Sri Ram Krishna, being the indweller of all souls, he could understand what is going on inside her. He got up and slapped her. Said, "Here also, we are thinking about court sitting inside the temple. That is the incident that has just happened. So that we are continuing that incident. How it is proceeding further? All the officers of the temple and the women attendants of the Rani raised a hue and cry." the gatekeeper ran hastily to catch hold of the master wondering what the noise within the temple was due to the officers came there out of curiosity but those who were the main cause of this noise the master and rani rasmani both were calm and tranquil without taking any notice of the noise and the officers running hither and thither because each one knew what he had done and what he had done was right sri ram krishna knew that he had punished her for not listening to his songs and thinking about mother sitting in front of divine mother so he did not find that he did he did anything wrong and rani rasmani also did not find that he had offended him we appended her in any way because she knew that he had committed a mistake sitting in the temple she did not have thought about court and the bhattacharya jay a spiritual giant you could know what was happening in her mind that's why he came and punished her she also accepted the punishment therefore both were tranquil and calm the master was calm and quiet with a gentle smile he escaped his lips serenely poised in his self and finding on the on self analysis that she had been thinking about the result of a particular case pending in the law court at that time instead of meditating on the universe of mother the rani was a little embarrassed repentant and serious again wondering how the master could know her thought the rani had also an element of surprise in her mind brought suddenly to her senses by the noise made by the officer she apprehended that there was a possibility of a great injury being inflicted on the innocent master by the mean minded people she then commanded them in a serious mood but charja is not is not at all to blame do not find fault with him later mathur heard the whole story from the rani and approved of the order some of the officers became very much disappointed but what could they do they thought 
want business savvy with the big affairs of the big people and remain quiet when he reads this the reader will perhaps think what a strange mood of the spiritual teacher is this what queer manifestation of that mood is this that of assaulting people we reply read the religious history of the world and you will see such events recorded in the lives of religious teachers of the world remember the event in the life of sri chaitanya of bringing the kazi to his senses and of transmitting devotion to acharya advaita by beating them in chaitanya's life we have got such instances where he was of the root but only to help the other people other persons think and you will find that such events were not lacking in the life of jesus also surrounded by his disciples jesus came to visit the temple of jehova at jerusalem and to offer worship sacrifices etc there what doubt is there about the fact that the jewish mind would feel the same pure and wonderful devotion at the time of visiting the temple at jerusalem as is felt by a hindu mind in visiting the holy places like varanasi vrindavan and other centers of pilgrimage over and over that the mind of jesus was also in bhava mukha that means in the threshold of the samadhi and the external world so he was aware of both the things the manifested world and unmanifested samadhi state where god was there in unmanifested state as brahman so being at the threshold that's called bhava mukha which has already been explained earlier so jesus was also in that state where he could see the world as well as god also simultaneously in that mood completely filled with the love of god he ran to have the direct vision of the deity as soon as he saw the temple from a distance many people were there outside the temple at the gate and in the courtyard variously busy in worldly affairs such as earning money deceiving others etc regardless of whether the pilgrims had the vision of the deity or not the temple priests were attentive only to their pursuit of extracting a little money out of them and the shopkeepers and others were all much given to considering how they could gain a little more than usual by selling animals flowers and other accessories of worship who felt the necessity of thinking that he was in the presence of god in the temple while he was entering the temple that means jesus entering the temple nothing of these things however attracted the attention of jesus who was filled with the spiritual emotions going straight into the temple and having the vision of the deity he was beside himself with joy to see that he was within him as the life of his life and the self of his self he began to feel that the temple and all the persons and things in it were more than his own for it was on coming here that he was blessed with the vision of this source and solace of his life when however coming down again the mind was looking for the manifestation of the inner mood in the persons and things outside he found that everything was the opposite of congenial so when he had the vision of god he found everything divine so he thought that everywhere he will see only divine things but when he came out and saw people were having all sorts of worldly dealings with one another they behaved in a very very worldly way the opposite of the congenial that no one was engaged in the service of solace service of the solace of his life that is god but that everyone was given to the 
enjoyment of lust and gold. His heart was then filled with despair and sorrow. He thought, what is this? Why don't you do whatever you like in the world outside? Why are all these worldly affairs here? It is inside the sacred precincts of the Jerusalem temple, where there is an special manifestation of God. Instead of thinking of Him, why you are here, why you are here and doing away with your worldly anguish, why have you brought in the world here to? Thinking thus, he was seized with divine anger and he assumed a terrible appearance and with a cane in hand drove off all the shopkeepers and others out of the temple by force. Having got a momentary awakening of the spirit from his words, they also went out without offering any resistance whatsoever, thinking that they had been indeed committing misdeeds. Just as Rani Rasmani felt that it, Sri Ramakrishna was right in punishing her. These merchants also, they felt the, the Jesus beating them with stick and driving them out was right, so they did not protest. The men fully tied down to the world who could not be awakened by words, got it by being flogged and went out. Neither were they angry, nor did they dare harm him in any way. That is the power of the spiritual person. The spiritual teacher, when he punishes, people will feel happy, people feel repentant, people will become better. In the life of Sri Krishna also, many events of this nature are found. For example, a man was beaten by him and forthwith got an awakening and recited hymns and praises to him as the Divine Lord himself. Again, extremely earthbound men came to him, came to harm him and got perplexed and stupefied by his words and laughter. Enough now of these incidents of the Puranas. This event is a bright example of the way in which the Master, under the impulsion of the Divine Power, manifested as the spiritual teacher, used to lose his individuality and teach and behave towards others. If we probe the event to the bottom, it does not seem to be a very ordinary matter. What a great difference do we find between the two the one insignificant temple priest receiving a very small pay and the other Rani, the, whose wealth, respect, intelligence, patience, courage and power astounded even the then very intelligent people of Calcutta. One is need to believe that such a poor Brahmin would find it difficult to approach her or if somehow he could do so, he would seek an opportunity to please her a little by flattery and such other methods and would consider himself blessed if he succeeded. But what actually happened was quite the contrary. There was not only a protest against his her wrong action, but the infliction of punishment on her person. Just as looking at the incident from the master's side, it seems to be a matter for no little surprise. So from the Rani's side also, it does seem very surprising that anger, egoism and the idea of doing injury to him did not cross her mind, though she met with that kind of behaviour. But we have already said, then when the mood of the spiritual teacher thus appears in the minds of great souls, identified with the universal I, when they feel that they are one with God, devoid of the slightest tinge of selfishness, ordinary men have to bow their heads before them, even against their will, 
not to speak of the people of sattvika nature like the rani who was a devotee for raised by the teacher's grace and power the limited human minds with the attention fixed on their own interest only can understand of themselves that whatever the teacher says conduces to their interest and there remains no alternative but to act in accordance with his directions again as the master used to say a man cannot become great in anything nor can he digest fame power position etc if he has not a special part of god in him the rani could receive the grace of the master manifested as it was in that harsh manner only because that kind of divine power was present in her who was of a sattvika nature rani rasmani said the master was one of the eight nayikas that is attendant goddesses of the divine mother she came down to the world to spread the worship of the divine mother that was the great glory of rani rasmani she was a divine goddess she had come down to serve mother in this world and spread her name shri rasmani dasi shri rasmani dasi desires of realizing the feet of kali were the words engraved on the seal to mark the documents and other papers of her estate on the seal of the estate so on official seal she had written that she is the servant of goddess kali so so much was the devotion to god so that godliness was there inside her therefore she could immediately understand the purpose for which she has been permitted she has been punished by sri ram krishna yes steadfast devotion to the divine mother was manifested in every action of the rani there is another thing to be mentioned it is recorded in the scriptures that your mind completely merged in god he exists in various books sri shankara has described beautifully in his book vivek chodavani that the pers- that means what the word is the shankara right the persons who have had their lives purpose fulfilled by the realization of self roam about in the world in strange attires some with ordinary clothes on some clad in barks of trees others having knowledge or the points of the compass as the dress that means stark naked some like madmen some like boys free from the slightest tinge of lust and gold and others again are similarly seen like ghosts so different are the ways they manifest their divinity inside or they hide their divinity inside so they want to look very ordinary or apart from ordinary either abnormal or subnormal so so they want to appear in some way to make their god realization hide so they want to hide themselves to avoid all the embarrassment by people these persons appear to be in such state in the eyes of the ordinary people in as much as the former remain always identified with the universal i when they are one with god they appear very 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 far removed removed from the normal people but it is through them alone that the power of god in the form of the spiritual teacher able to destroy the darkness of ignorance is specially manifested but it is such people who have gone beyond all this human norm, normal n- normal states into the super normal state they can teach us about god and other things about god for we have already said that it is only by the destruction 
of the little selfish I, that immense I pervading the universe, and the divine power as the spiritual teacher doing good to the people are manifested together. Those persons of self-knowledge who remain always in the position of teachers of religion or rishis have to behave like ordinary men and seem according to circumstances and for the training of others to possess good conduct, steadfastness, restraint, power of argumentation, knowledge of scriptures, etc. In short, an intense attachment for everything that is good and moral and a strong detachment or aversion from anything that is bad and immoral. We have said seem because they spend their lifetime in these moods in order to indicate to others the path leading beyond the realm of Maya. Though they ever live in the full awareness of non-dual Brahman, oneness of all things and ideas, good or bad, religious or irreligious, moral or immoral, which belong to the domain of Maya. When ordinary religious teachers have very often to spend their time in this way, it is superfluous to mention that the incarnation of God or the teachers of mankind or the world teachers would spend their lifetime in the way mentioned above. That is why it is so difficult for ordinary human beings to understand and gauge their nature, their acts and endeavours. It is especially so in the case of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the incarnation for the modern age. For the greatness, power, splendour, etc. so far recorded in the scriptures as manifested in the incarnations of God were hidden in such a way in him that no one could get an inkling of these things by seeing him superficially a few times, not till they were intimately connected with him as genuine seekers of truth receiving his grace. So unless God reveals himself through his grace, it is very difficult to know that God has incarnated in, in through man, through a man's body. Unless he himself gives indication that I am God who has come in this form, man can never know. It is the grace of that great incarnations who announce themselves now and then to, of course, very selected people who have got the tremendous faith in them, tremendous purity of mind, tremendous selflessness, who will not exploit this knowledge to pro proclaim themselves as great. So such people, a few of them, they express that they are God himself come in the form of human beings. So unless God himself reveals, it is difficult to know that God has come in the form of a human being. What is the external quality in him by which you could feel attracted? By knowledge, he has, so to say, wholly he was, that is Sri Ramakrishna was, so to say, wholly illiterate. So you could not recognize him as God, because God is all-knowing. He does not know even how to write properly. How do, could you know that the Veda, the Vedanta and all other scriptures were read out to him and he had completely mastered them, all by virtue of his prodigious memory? Will you gauge him by his intellect? What counsel would you seek from him, from whose lips are always heard words like, I am nothing, I don't know anything, my mother knows everything. Sri Ramana used to say, if anybody asked it, I do not know anything, my mother knows everything. But he is one with the mother, he would never reveal. So whatever mother knows, he also knows. That means he knows everything. But he would put off the persons, saying, I do not know. I, well, my mother knows everything. But mother is always with me. 
she always makes me know whatever she knows. He would never reveal it to us because we would not understand it. Again, we would call him, oh, he is an egoistic fellow, boasting himself. So, he would not make us sinners by telling such things against him. That is why he would never reveal. And even if you seek his guidance, he says, ask mother and she will tell you. Can you keep your faith steady and act according to his words? If you meet such a person, so will we act according to his guidance? Because he does not want to guide, he wants to ask mother, she will guide him. So he does not do anything, that's why he is telling like this. So you know, you don't want to be led by him. You will think, ah, what a piece of advice he has given us. We have all been hearing since we read the primers, like Kathamala and Bododaya, that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, formless, under the nature of pure consciousness, that he can, if he wills, give us knowledge and understanding of everything. This is what we have read about God. And how can we call him as a man of God, who says that you go to his mother, she will let you know, I do not know anything. Whatever mother knows, she, she knows, only knows, I am a child. So a person says like this, how to believe him, that he is all-knowing. But will he do to act up to this teaching? Will you make an estimate of him by wealth, name and fame? Oh, the master himself had indeed plenty of all this, and he would again advise you from the very beginning to renounce them. He did not want wealth or money or any name and fame. He would renounce everything and he would ask you all to renounce. Such was the case with everything around him. The only means by which to gauge him was by seeing his purity, love of God and goodwill. So his love for everyone and the purity, the perfect purity and love of God, that extreme love of love of God by which he would lose himself in praising God or uttering his name. If you are attracted by this, well and good. If not, it was beyond your reach to gauge and understand him. We therefore say that it was not a matter of small fortune for Rani Rasmani that she, instead of rejecting the grace through egoism and pride, because of the harsh way in which it was manifested, could understand and profit by the Master's mood as the spiritual teacher and treasure it up in the innermost chamber of her heart. So, he comes to the conclusion that Rani Rasmani had a divine nature within herself which enabled her to recognize the great incarnation, which is very difficult for ordinary people to recognize. So, the mood of the spiritual teacher and the Madhuranath, the next chapter, chapter 6, we will take it up in our next class. So, till now we have heard Sri Ramakrishna in his different moods as a spiritual teacher and it takes a long time for a big flower to blossom. So, it takes a long time for the young spiritual teacher to grow into the world famous teacher of spirituality, the incarnation of the age. So, this topic will be taken up by the author. In, we will take it up in the next class. Today, we shall stop here itself. Niranyanam nityam anantarupam Bhaktanu kampadrita vigraham vai Ishavataram parameshem idyam Tam Ramakrishnam shirasanam amaha O Ramakrishna, the taintless one, the eternal one, the one with infinite forms, the one who has assumed form for the sake of devotees, the one with the incarnate supreme soul, 
and the one, the adorable Lord of all, we salute thee, bowing our heads.